Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a pineapple upside down cake and this is what it looks like. I think it's a really pretty cake. It has pineapple slices sitting in caramelized brown sugar. I like to put a maraschino cherry in the center of each uh, pineapple slice. That's entirely optional, but I think it makes the whole cake kind of pop. And then underneath we have this really soft and fluffy white butter cake. So the first thing you will need to do is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you're going to need a nine inch round cake pan with two inch sides. So that's 23 centimeters by five centimeters. Now you could just spray your pan with one of those nonstick vegetable sprays, but today I'm going to butter my pan. So I've just melted a little bit of butter and then with a pastry brush, I'm going to brush the bottom and the sides. You want to make sure you really butter it because we don't want our pineapple because we're doing it upside down so we don't want it to stick to the bottom of the pan. So that's that. Okay so for we need to first do our um, brown sugar with butter. So just a small saucepan. You will need four tablespoons, which is 55 grams. Uh, now you could use either salted or unsalted butter here. I like to have it at room temperature because it will melt faster and cut it into small cubes because that'll help it melt faster too. And then I'm gonna put this over medium heat and along with three quarters of a cup, which is 150 grams of light brown sugar. And then, it's really simple, we're just going to melt these two together, stir it a little bit, and we're just going to, once it's melted, we're just going to let it cook for until it starts to bubble around the outside edge. Okay, so the sugar and the butter is melted, and it starts to bubble like this. So that's as long as you need to cook. The mixture, take it off the heat, and then just simply pour it into your pan. And then just swirl it to get an even layer. Shake it a little, like so. And then we're going to put the uh, pineapple on top of that. Now, there's two ways you can do this. I'm going to do it the way my mom always did it with the canned pineapple slices. Actually, this cake originated in the 1920s and it did use canned pineapple slices, mainly because if you even could find fresh pineapple, it would be really expensive. So uh, I did do a video back, way back in 2011 uh, where I used fresh pineapple. So if you want to use fresh pineapple because it's more readily available now, you could go and look at that video and see how I did that. But I'm going to use the can. So you will need one 20 ounce can, which is 567 grams of the pineapple slices. Drain your uh, pineapple and then just take your slices and put them around. Pack them in pretty tight because, you know, they are going to shrink a little in the uh, oven as they bake. I think I'm going to do, I think it's about seven. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to really squeeze this in and overlap it a bit because I like pineapple <laughs> and one right in the center. Now you could just do it like this, but you know, it's kind of an old fashioned cake and we're going to use the maraschino cherries. I'm going to put that. If you don't like, if you don't want to use them, just leave them out. But maraschino cherries, I love these as a kid. Um, they're kind of just preserved cherries and there's different types. There's ones done in alcohol, but we're using the ones that are done in the sugar syrup and just find them in your grocery store, usually in a small jar. And I'm going to put it into the center, press it down. Like I said, if you don't like maraschino cherries, just leave it out. 
take the stems off. Okay, and then I put one around the outside again. You can do it however you want. So that's our pineapple. So what I'm gonna do is clean this up, get my mixer, and we will make our batter. So now for our cake batter. The first thing you need to do, actually, even before you do the pineapple, is you wanna separate two large eggs and put the, as I've got here, put your yolks into one bowl and your whites into the other. So that would be, if you want to go by gram weight, about 40 grams of egg yolks, 60 grams of egg whites. And then I just cover it in plastic wrap and let them come up to room temperature. So I would, before you even start that, I would separate your eggs. And then for the batter, if you have a stem mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, or you could use a hand mixer for this. Actually, I will be using a hand mixer later. Um, First thing, a half a cup, 113 grams of butter. Have your butter at room temperature. I'm using unsalted. You could use salted. The reason I use unsalted for a couple of reasons. One, I like the flavor. It's got a real nice butter flavor. But two, I like to um, control the amount of salt in the cake. And sometimes whatever type of butter you buy, it's hard to, every one is a little different with the salt content. So that's why I use unsalted. If you want to use salt, uh, the salted, that's fine. Just leave out the salt in the recipe. So along with that, I'm going to add one cup, 200 grams of granulated white sugar and one teaspoon, oh, one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract. So I'm going to beat this. I'm going to start on low speed and then increase to medium high and beat it for a couple minutes just until everything gets mixed together and it gets nice and light and fluffy. Okay. So this is what you're looking for, nice and light. Periodically, whenever you're making any kind of batter, cake batter, cookie batter, scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl. That way everything will get mixed together. So now I'm going to add those two large egg yolks and just beat those in. good. So now in a separate bowl, scrape that off. In a separate bowl, I have one and a half cups, which is 195 grams of all-purpose flour, plain flour. To that, I'm adding two teaspoons, eight grams of baking powder, give a nice lift to our cake, and a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of salt. Now you could sift your ingredients together, or I'm just using a wire whisk. You could use a fork for that. And you will also need a half a cup, 120 milliliters, 120 grams of milk. Have your milk at room temperature. You could use like a full fat whole milk, or you know, you can get away with a like a reduced fat 2% if that is all you have in the house. So now what I'm going to do is add about a third of this flour and then I'm going to beat that in on low speed and then I'm going to alternate with the milk. So keep it on low speed. Okay, and then I'm going to add about half of my milk. Beat that in. And then, now your batter is going to be really thick, so don't panic if, you know, you kind of go, whoa. And that's because we separated our eggs. So.
and the rest of our milk. And give that a scrape. If you wanted to, when you if you used the uh, pineapple slices, there's going to be when you drain them, there's some pineapple juice. If you would like to, you could replace like a little bit of the milk with the pineapple juice if you wanted to get the cake have a little more pineapple flavor. So, and we beat that in. Okay, that looks good. Now, I know you're probably wondering, why did I separate the eggs? You know, there's different ways to make cake batters, and you can use whole eggs, but if you want your, your cake to be a little more lighter and fluffier, you, you can separate the eggs and then beat the egg whites separately and then we're going to fold it into the batter. And that will give us a, a lighter textured cake. Just a little trick. <laughs> Could you do it with your other cakes? Yeah, you can. A little more work, but it's worth it. So now, I get that. So. so now, I'm going to do this with my hand mixer. Take my uh, whites. And then I'm going to add just a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar stabilizes the whites and it helps to prevent you from like over beating them and then they get dry. You can find cream of tartar on the spice aisle of your grocery store. You don't absolutely need it. You can beat these because it's not like we're making um, like a meringue cookie where you really want to be careful. So if you can't find it, you could leave it out. Or, I mean, you could use like a quarter of a teaspoon of just lemon juice. But in this case, I'm using it because I have it in the house. But don't go, don't make a special trip. So now I'm going to beat this until we get just get uh, stiff peaks. Okay. So there we have it. See the, you can see that. They kind of go up and then a little, not real stiff. They kind of, I don't know. A little peek and go over. I don't know how to describe that. And then, so what we're going to do is just fold it in. I'm going to add like just a little because you can see that's a pretty stiff cake batter. So I'm going to add like a little of my whites to kind of break that up a little. And then add like half of that. And then scoop that off. And then I'll add the rest. Okay, and just mix until you don't see the whites anymore, and then stop. So now, we're just going to, as you can see, it's a lot lighter now than before. So now, once you have your batter in the pan, I'm using an offset spatula. You could just use the back of the spoon and just spread it out evenly.
try to get it as even as possible. Right to the edges. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay. So now, don't waste that. For baking, everyone's oven is a little different. I'm gonna say between say 35 and 45 minutes. I do rotate my cake pan front to back about halfway through to get an even bake because usually you have hot spots in your oven. So what you're looking for, I mean time is one thing, but you want to look at your cake, it will be golden brown, it will rise, it will be golden brown. It'll start to separate from, just start to be separating from the sides of the pan. If you take your finger in the center, it kind of bounce back, and you can do the toothpick test, uh, take a wooden toothpick, insert it into the center, and it should come out clean. Just be careful you don't put it all the way down into the, um, just put it a little way down, not into the pineapple slices, because then it'll be wet because pineapple is. So I'm gonna say 35 to 45 minutes. Okay. So our pineapple upside down cake is ready. So put your pan on a wire rack. As you can see, beautiful golden brown just starting to separate from the sides of the pan. And when I put a toothpick into the center, it came out clean, and if you touch it, and it's firm. So now what I'm gonna do is leave it like that for about 10 minutes, and then we will take it out of the pan. So now to take your cake out of the pan, you could invert it onto your serving platter, but I prefer to actually invert it onto a wire rack so that the cake can finish cooling. So. With your wire rack, what I'm gonna do, you could just spray it with a nonstick spray. I'm just gonna put a little butter on there so that the uh, cake doesn't stick. It's kind of a little trick. You can do that with all your cakes. And then just take either a knife, offset spatula, and still warm. Let's run it around the inside to make sure it's not sticking. Okay, this is a tricky part. <laughs> so take your wire rack or like I said, your serving platter, put it on top and then we're gonna flip it like so. And then hopefully we can just lift this off and get my, oh, it worked. <laughs> Sometimes, and you might find, especially that center one, sticks. It actually did when I was testing the recipe. So what, all you need to do is either take like a flat edge like this or that and just kind of scoop it up and flip it back on your cake. No one's going to know but you. So there's our cake. You know, it's, I think it's really pretty. It's kind of old-fashioned, you know, maybe a little garish <laughs> but i love it with the bright red maraschino cherries against the yellow uh, pineapple slices so now i do like to serve this warm but this a little too warm so i'm just going to let this cool down just a bit and then when we come back we will try a slice okay so now let's cut a slice it's still quite warm just the way i like it See a nice, soft, fluffy cake there. We get a little pineapple. It's a really good cake. Um, you got the pineapple slices. Now, if you used like I said in, in the older video I did, I used the fresh pineapple. You know, fresh pineapple has a more, um, I guess, 
uh, sharper flavor, more the pineapple flavor than the can. But I, I like it with the can. It's really, it's still really good. And then you've got the um, soft, it's really fluffy, buttery, sweet, a little bit of vanilla flavor. And then you've got the, the car uh, caramelized sugar on the top. That's a little more sweetness. It's a sweet cake. These old fashioned cakes, let, let's be honest, they're sweet. Um, I don't know why, but they are, and they're good. <laughs> uh, I really like this to serve this warm. Even if you have, you can you know, cover and store the cake, even the next day, what I tend to do is just pop it into the microwave oven just to kind of get a, uh, a little warm. You could serve, I, I think it's fine just the way it is. You could serve it with some whipped cream. Everything tastes better with whipped cream or even a little ice cream. But you must try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.